Now in this video, we will discuss the dot product, also known as the scalar product. Now in vector language, scalar simply means constant. Alright, so uh, why is it known as a scalar product? Well, later we'll discuss and talk about it. So what exactly is a dot product? Now this is the formula for the dot product. It looks a bit scary, okay? Um, but it's actually quite easy. So um, it's after all a formula. Just take it. Now, what you really need to learn to do is really to how to work this dot product, okay? Because uh, this portion here, this is actually the magnitude of a, of which we already know how to figure out uh, the length of a, and this is the length of b, and there's a cosine theta somewhere, okay? Um, later on, we'll discuss um, how to make sense of this, how to visualize this. First of all, let's tackle this. How do we do this a dot b thingy? Okay, so um, the dot product is actually quite easy in the sense that if I have a vector a that goes like say 1, 2, 3, okay, and uh, let's say I have a vector b that goes like mm, say 1, minus 2, and 0. Okay, so when I have a dot b, okay, which is, this means the dot product, alright, um, it means that I will have 1, 2, 3, a dot with this 1 minus 2 0 okay and how do we work this out okay now it's, it seems like it's matrix multiplication but it's really not all right so how do we work this out it's actually quite easy now what we're going to do is uh, let me use another color to highlight to you okay we're going to take this number 1 multiply by this number okay and that gives me 1 isn't it okay let me use another color uh, orange and then we're going to take this number multiply by this number which will give me a negative 4 okay and uh, we are going to take this number multiply by this number and that gives me a 0 alright as you can see uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add up all these products alright so basically 1 multiplied by 1 plus 2 multiplied by negative 2 plus 3 multiplied by 0 and that gives me the answer of a negative 3 so this is how we work out the dot product okay which at the end of the day it becomes a constant value okay which is why the name scalar product alright because it means that after you after you have done the dot the answer is actually a constant value okay so what does this dot product really do Alright, uh, there are a few uses for it, but the one of the most important is how do we use this formula. Okay, now let's take a look at this uh, diagram over here. Now let's say I have this vector A, uh, which is in red. Okay, vector A, let's, let's call this vector A. Okay, and uh, there's this vec blue vector. Okay, we shall call it vector B. Such that these two vectors are not parallel and therefore they form an angle of theta. Okay, so this angle called theta, right, um, between the two vectors. Okay, now what this dot product really does is basically um, a formula that can help you find the value of theta. Okay, so let's take this example here that we have just worked out. So let's say our vector A is the vector 1, 2, 3, okay, which is this vector over here. And the vector B is the vector uh, 1, negative 2, 0. And let's say we are interested to find the angle between these two vectors and how we're going to work it out. Okay, so according to the formula, uh, this is what will happen, right? 1, 2, 3, uh, dot with 1, negative 2, 0. Okay, this is the A dot B here. Okay, is equal to the mod of A. Now, the mod of A will be the, the magnitude of A, which is the square, uh, square root of 1 square, 2 square, 3 square added together. So that gives us uh, square root 14. Okay, and uh, for the mod of B, that will be 1 square, 2 square, uh, that will be square root 5. Okay, and cosine theta. Okay, and as per what we discussed earlier on, uh, this left-hand side of the dot product, uh, we, we already know how to work it out, and that gives us a value of negative 3. So negative 3 equals to square root 14, um, square root 5, uh, cosine theta. As you can see here, this equation, solving for cosine theta isn't that difficult a thing, right? So, um, and in fact, if you think a little harder, to find theta, okay, simply the cosine inverse of this value, work this value out. Alright, so what we're going to key in is we're going to key in, um, okay, let's see, negative 3 divided by the square root of 14 
times 5 okay here we go all right so this is the value the the, the number on the right hand side and uh, we're gonna cosine inverse okay first of all let's change our mode to the degree mode so we can have the answer in degree okay here we go so we're gonna cosine inverse the answer uh oh one more time cosine inverse the answer that we found earlier on and that gives us the value of 1.9 all right now this 1.9 doesn't look quite right i think it's still in radian mode yeah it's, it's still in radian mode so let's convert it back <coughs> to degree mode oh, okay never mind uh, we know how to convert to degree isn't it so we multiply by 180 and we divide it by pi so that's how we convert to degree so okay we'll get the angle of theta being um, 1 1 111 okay 111 so 111 degrees so let's just keep it to three significant figure okay so now as you can see here this is 111 degrees versus now does this theta look like 111 degrees well this is obviously an acute angle and this is obviously an uh, obtuse angle okay so what you need to come to understand is that um, when you have two lines intersecting each other they form two angles okay one which is theta and the other one which is the neighbor next door which will be the 180 minus theta okay uh, obviously one will be acute the other will be obtuse all right one less than 90 the other will be more than 90. what we ended up here with is the angle that um not quite what we want because what we want is the acute angle and not the obtuse angle okay so how do we end up like this okay simply because now if you remember from your basic trigo days um cosine being a negative ratio okay because of this negative three here all right is actually in the second quadrant okay the angle actually lies in the second quadrant which is in the obtuse angle so that is why we ended up with the obtuse angle and uh, because we key into the calculator okay as we did earlier on we key into the calculator with the negative sign uh, the calculator will give us the answer in the second quadrant and that is how we end up with the 111 okay and uh, actually the remedy to this problem is very simple all you need to do is to take 180 minus 111 and you will get 69 degrees okay so the 69 degrees is the answer that we are actually looking for okay now actually if the question did not ask you for obtuse or acute angle either one should work either one will work but most of the time we'll leave answer in the acute angle form all right so um, sometimes you may even see the uh, a variation of this formula okay uh, in the sense that you will you will you will look a bit like this all right cosine theta equals to a dot b over mod of a mod of b okay so so well basically just multiply um, this mod a mod b over to the left side and we end up with this so in some of your school notes or your textbooks right you will notice that um, some teachers like to put a modulus sign in for the whole thing okay and that is to make it positive so that you always end up with a po um, acute angle instead of an obtuse angle like what we did here okay but um that's it and done well whether you get an obtuse or an acute it doesn't really matter um because as long as you are confident about what you're looking for um then you will be able to convert back to what you want okay so this is an introduction of what a dot product is uh, how do you do a dot product and um what is it used for okay let's talk about a bit of the properties of the dot product okay for that we need to scroll down a little okay so when we talk about the properties of dot product oh it's in red okay doesn't matter um dot product okay i forgot the dot here okay the properties of the dot product all right let's talk about the first one all right dot product is commutative right in, in other words if you have the vector a dot b okay it will be the same as if you take the b dot a 
Alright, very much like algebra, a multiplied by b is the same as b multiplied by a. Now, do take note, we call this dot product for a reason. We don't call it a times b, uh, because eventually we can learn another product called the cross product. So, uh, to avoid confusion, we always call this dot and call the other one cross. Okay, so uh, this first property, I don't think it's very difficult for us to understand or to remember because it's very much like uh, the, our basic algebra. Okay, and anyway, uh, if you really need a proof, you can always uh, go and redo this yourself. Uh, that means uh, rearrange this left and right and you will get the same number negative 3 anyway okay i mean you, you can even already um, mentally work it out okay i guess all right so let's move on okay so the first property says that uh, dot product is commutative so a dot b is the same as b dot a let's take a, uh, take a look at property number two okay now property number two says that is um what is that word called distributive yes distributive law applies to dot product all right meaning to say um again very much like our um algebra Alright, so if I have a vector A and I want to dot with this vector B plus C, okay, all I need to do is I can actually multiply in the um, A. Okay, so it becomes A dot B plus A dot C. Okay, and of course, uh, based on what we discussed in the property number one, A dot B is the same as B dot A and therefore, uh, no matter how you arrange it, it will be totally fine. So again, very much like our algebra, alright, so nothing too special about it. Let's talk about property number three now this is pretty interesting okay what it says here is that if i have lambda a dot with mu of b okay of which lambda and mu are both constants all right so in uh, vector language they are known as scalars all right um you can actually take out the lambda and mu and do the dot product separately ah this is useful very very useful because eventually we're gonna we're not going to do the dot product on whole number integers like like this all the time so sometimes uh, we, we may have to do a dot product involving say modulus or even fractions okay let me show you a quick example to roughly tell you what I, uh, to, to show you what I mean let's say we have a we have a we have a, a vector like this 5 over 2 3 uh, 5 and let's say this is a 1 okay and we're supposed to dot this with um, say um, uh, okay, let, let's say uh, square root 2 over 2 um, and uh, let's say we have a uh, square root 2 and we have a uh, 2 root 2 uh, something something like this okay now as you can imagine probably if you, if you were to do this dot product this one multiply with this one and uh, add on to this one multiply with this, wow it's, it's gonna look very chaotic and look pretty uh, messy to simplify and therefore most people may simply get it wrong okay so according to this property number three we can actually take out the half from the first vector and we end up with one five one uh no no this won't be a one i'm so sorry this will be a two okay so one five two right from a fraction type of a, a vector now it becomes a whole number type of vector okay and uh, for this second vector we can actually take out the square root two which will then leaves us with a uh, half one and two okay now of course if you if you want to take out a half further all right we can do it uh, but i think this is good enough and simple enough all right so we can take these two constants okay which is my lambda and mu okay and uh, multiply them together outside and uh, now all we need to do is to work out on this uh, dot product then at least these numbers here uh, would be something easier for us to work on okay as compared to the original okay so this is what the third property is trying to tell you and uh, trying to uh, you know let you know what you can do okay in cases like this it'll be a lot easier okay now next one will be property number four property number four says that um, ah this is also pretty interesting a dot a is equal to mod of a square where does this come from Okay, so a dot a, uh, which is the two vector that are equal. So let's imagine I got this vector called a, and I have another vector which is the same vector, also known as a, uh, and obviously they seem to overlap each other like this. Okay, and uh, according to the formula we discussed earlier on, all right, a dot a is equal to mod. Oh uh, no, a dot b is equal to mod a multiplied by mod b cosine theta and now if my b is the same as my a i'll obviously have a dot a equals to mod of a multiplied by mod of a mm, not b and cosine theta isn't it now and 
when I have these two vectors in the same direction, the angle between these two, th these two vectors uh, will be zero, isn't it? Okay, so, so um, and of course, all of us should understand that cosine zero is not zero, cosine zero is one, and therefore, a dot a equals to mod of a squared multiplied by one, and, and that's how we end up with this property number three. Okay, uh, sorry, property number four. Okay, so this is well something useful when you need to use it. Otherwise, um, you know, it's it's not that important. I would say. Okay, next we'll talk about property number five, which is one of the most important properties that you have to know. Okay, it says that if a dot b, two vectors dot each other, and I end up with zero, all right, it means that a vector a is perpendicular to vector b, and vice versa. Okay, in another words, if I have two vectors perpendicular each to each other, the dot product will become zero. Okay, now similarly, when the dot product is zero, um, then the A and B are perpendicular. Well, what's going on? Now let's try to visualize this a little. It's actually quite easy. Okay, now let's say I've got two vectors here, A and B, and they are perpendicular to each other. Okay, perpendicular to each other like this. So um, according to the formula, we have A dot B will be equal to mod of A multiplied by mod of B cosine 90 degrees. Okay, and uh, all of us should know that um, cosine 90 degrees is actually 0. And when 0 multiplied by anything, that gives us even more. The whole thing will simply be 0. And that's why we end up with a dot b equals to 0. Okay, now this is by far, amongst all the properties, this will be by far the most important. And therefore, um, it will be one that you will remember Okay, uh, very very well, trust me. Okay, so um, alright, there you go. This, these are all the important properties that will help you um, solve and work out the dot product in a, a quicker manner than if you were to imagine you would do this manually and uh, not knowing the property number three. Okay, so yeah, here you go.